let me talk a little bit about a uh, couple for a couple of minutes about some of the other uh, issues out there. One is the money race, and here uh, on the Republican side, of course, uh, Romney, for uh, all of his problems in the last week or ten days, continues to have an enormous advantage in terms of money and in organization. Uh, but as we've seen with the Adelson money, we now are living in a world where uh, some of that can be countered. Uh, if you just have one or two very wealthy friends, countered enough at least that you can keep from being overwhelmed. And so while uh, uh, Romney's going to have, uh, uh, and his uh, super PAC will have uh, probably $10 million to $12 million in television ads uh, on, Gingrich is going to have at least half that, and that means he gets over the bar. And if you've seen the ad that is the core, it's now turning away from attacking Romney the royalist, Romney the Marie Antoinette of contemporary America, to attacking Romney at what is a more vulnerable point in the Republican electorate, uh, which is Romney the moderate. And using damning videotape, uh, going back to the earlier years when he tried to get to the left of Ted Kennedy and talked about how he really was a, a moderate and a progressive. Uh, and uh, that uh, will make a difference out there. And around the country, we're going to see a significant difference. The super PAC focus on the presidential candidates has been real, but if we want to look at the real impact of super PAC spending and of uh, uh, post-Citizens United spending, it's going on much more under the surface right now in Senate races and an enormous amount of money being spent trying to take on incumbents and uh, damage them or bring them back down in a, in a number of those Senate states. There are 23 Democrats up uh, in the Senate to only 10 Republicans, and uh, Democrats are feeling better about this, partly because uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, has been running such a, uh, an impressive campaign, uh, and one which uh, leaves her uh, meeting the zeitgeist uh, out there right now. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of other states, including North Dakota, where their uh, prospects seemed grim and now seem uh, significantly better. But with a 23 to 10 margin, and in a year which will be an anti-Washington, anti-incumbent year, uh, if you've got twice as many incumbents running as the other side, it's still uh, a heavy lift for Democrats to be able to hold on to the Senate. Uh, easier, of course, if Obama wins re-election, in part because uh, they uh, can suffer a loss of three and still retain the Senate with a 50-50 margin, but a loss of three with a Republican victory would give the Republicans uh, the, uh, the Senate. And given that super PAC money, the lion's share of which is going to be on the Republican side, trying to soften up Democratic incumbents, uh, you're getting a lot of interest now in watching this uh, bargain uh, uh, or deal reached between Warren and Scott Brown uh, to try and limit the spending of outsiders. Um, most uh, seasoned observers look at it with some skepticism um, because uh, basically uh, there are lots of loopholes or ways to get around it. You wonder whether you could have uh, a kind of Machiavellian action by a super PAC coming in and doing something that seems nominally to favor, say, an Elizabeth Warren, uh, and then demanding that uh, she pony up half the money and give it to a, a, a charity um, uh, to uh, try and weaken her campaign, and whether this will have any impact on the uh, super PACs themselves. But it's the most clever way we've seen yet of candidates trying to tell these outside groups don't put money in because you will weaken me, you won't uh, help me uh, in this process. And that will be watched with some interest. If it shows that it's having any impact, it may be spread to other states, or at least you may see candidates trying to use it uh, as a wedge. But money is going to be a very big factor in this case. On the House side, the Republicans have a very, very strong uh, 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 case to make that they will hold the House under any except uh, extraordinary tsunami-like conditions. Uh, but there are still some open questions. Sizable number uh, at this point even of vacancies of incumbents retiring and uh, leaving because of uh, being redistricted out of their seats. Uh, so we're already up to a tenth of the House, and this is an early point. Um, and we've got a lot of redistricting cases to go and a lot thrown in limbo by the courts. Pennsylvania now, just uh, the most recent yesterday, and of course, the Texas case, 
which could make a difference of four seats. And if uh, there is a tough year for Republicans, they have a 25-seat cushion, four seats is a huge number. Uh, with a set of districts now very much up in the air, and it's not at all clear that there'll be enough time for the court uh, in Texas, which has had the case sent back to it by the Supreme Court, uh, to be able to put together a plan uh, that will work. And at the same time, everybody's waiting to see if the Supreme Court is going to use either this case or something else going forward to completely eliminate Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, uh, which they've hinted at doing before, which would mean uh, have serious implications for other southern states uh, also going through their redistricting plans. To this point, though, what redistricting has done is not to give Republicans a significant advantage, despite the fact that they have many more states under their control, but to enable them to shore up vulnerable freshmen uh, against a tidal wave, uh, to add more levees against the possibility uh, of an enormous flood. Uh, and that's why John Boehner is confident that they'll be able to hold the House. But a presidential candidate who looks like a McGovern uh, or a Goldwater could mean that those levees would be just like the uh, New Orleans ones before Katrina.